a beard hair just went into my mouth. That's gonna be the intro to this video. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code ITRESOLVES10YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What's going on everybody and welcome back to some more historic gameplay. Today we are trying out a very interesting deck. This is a steel stuff deck uh, and technically it runs all five colors, which is really fascinating. It's obviously base green white, uh, but does, you know, kind of splash into everything, especially with things like uh, the, the prismatic bridge here. The idea is to kind of get this down now. Importantly, though, the, the crucial piece to this is that Dryad of the Illusionary Grove essentially gives a, a legion grove, excuse me, essentially makes all of our uh, basic lands, any lands that we like, uh, or really any of our lands, whatever we want them to be. Um, and then additionally, we have the world tree, which kind of plays a similar role. Uh, but the idea is to, to kind of ramp and protect yourself up until you can get either a bridge down or Genesis ultimatum or basically any of these big things. Uh, we've got fierce empath to help us search out both Xanathar as well as the Nyx Bloom Ancient. Uh, and the idea is to, to drop this down and then be able to steal stuff with the, with, with Xanathar. Uh, now we played a reanimator style version of this list. This is obviously much more focused on the ramp side. Side. we've got the cultivates uh we've got the migration path plenty of stuff to pull out a bunch of lands uh and then of course next bloom ancient to give us a lot of lands uh and then ideally just be able to play tons and tons of stuff off of the opponent's uh deck now because of azusa as well as dryad we can actually play lands on off of the top of their deck as well so we kind of just get to do it all uh which is really interesting um in terms of protection we have do of course have doom scar here uh our creatures if we need to we can heroic intervention to keep them alive we've also got to fairies protection guardian of faith all these kind of uh protection spells to get us basically where we need to be uh druid class is very nice it also gives us a little extra land um and ideally some life gain to kind of keep us in it so very curious to see how this plays out i've only played one game with it but i happened upon this list and searching for some more historic decks to play and i just kind of fell in love with it so we're gonna give it a shot we're gonna send it through three games and we're gonna see how it goes so let's go ahead and jump right in and here we are for game number one. Uh, and this is actually a great hand, honestly. We've got Dryad, Cultivate, Azusa, um, and the Teferi's Protection just in case. I'm very much hoping we don't find ourselves against any kind of, you know, black hand destruction deck, which it doesn't look like is the case. So, uh, high hopes here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play the Druid class. This just gives us, again, that life gain. Getting that started as quickly as we can just seems like a, uh, a prime, prime bet. Uh, let's do this. That's going to give us a little extra. And then I'm going to go ahead and cultivate here. I think, um, this gets us a little bit further. They're going to counter. Okay. Um, honestly, if that's what they're going to counter, I'm cool with it. <laughs> Gift of paradise. Interesting. Okay. Uh, very curious actually. Um, so you can do this. I don't think that's great though. I think the play right now is, uh, potentially Azusa. Which I think is right. Um, Azusa is the one that if it dies, it's not quite as bad for us because we can only play one at a time anyway. Um, and so I'd rather get this out now. And if if they sweep, if they do something like that, it's not the end of the world. Uh, truth be told, right now we just kind of need, um, well, more lands, of course, but like a bridge or something along those lines that we can play out. Uh, and maybe that was an argument to play the Dryad um, just because that does give us a little bit more we can do, but a beard hair just went into my mouth. That's going to be the intro to this video. Uh, anyway, all right, uh, let's see how this one goes. Uh, interesting. Tamiya's Epiphany. Uh, I'll be honest, didn't even know that card existed. Um, so I think the play right now is going to be to foretell this, and then we can leave up to Fairy's Protection in case we need it. I'll happily attack in for one here. Might as well. Um, this game could go on for quite a while. Huh. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Uh, my turn. 
I'm wondering how, I mean, so we might be able to get around this in a weird way. Um, hmm. Okay, so let's do this correctly, though. Um, I think we're going to lose Azusa here, which is fine. Or I guess we can wait. We don't have to do that yet. We could just Teferi's Protection. No attacks. In turn, this triggers, and then we Teferi's Protection and hope they don't have a counter, which looks like they don't. All right. Uh, sweet. That solves that. Um... So then we don't lose our lands. They can't attack us. Next turn, we can Doomscar. Maybe Heroic Intervention as well. Um, just to give everything Hexproof. Like, that seems kind of good. They are mounting a very strong assault against us, though. Uh, that attack does nothing, which is helpful. Um, can we do all of this? We cannot. Um, all right, so what's the play? I think it's honestly just a Doomscar first. Let's just get the big 8-8 eight eight and these little mini dudes off the board here. They do draw some cards, which kind of sucks. Um, and then I think we pass. Uh, I wish we could very... Uh, we, we just can't, unfortunately. Uh, we give everything hexproof and then they can't target it. Um, that's kind of helpful. I mean, we did, we played around that as about, about as well as we could have hoped. We're still at 25 life, so, like, that was pretty solid. Uh, but they do have multiple planeswalkers at this point, so I think it's safe to say we might be in just bad shape. Um, and unfortunately we just keep drawing lands. Um, I mean... <sighs> That doesn't help a lot. Uh, I think we just do this for now. The problem is they can just make us sacrifice those two creatures. So it's like, doesn't seem great. You know what I mean? Um, sacrifice the world tree. Unfortunately, we just don't have enough mana for that anyway. And that's dead. Uh, yep. <laughs> I'm trying to think if we can get out of this. I don't really think we can. Um, That's not going to help. Uh, whoops, I actually meant to cycle that. That was a mistake. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go ahead and concede here. Unfortunately, that's a big loss for us. That's OK, though. Let's go ahead and jump into game two. And here we are for game two with a very unfortunate hand. Uh, definitely not going to be keeping this, so we're going to run this back and see what we can get. Hopefully something a little better. Um, that's terrible. I mean, it's a hand. We're going to keep it. Um, we'll throw a protection back and hope that we can get something a little better here. Uh, we do have plenty of the colors we need, uh, so there's a positive there, but obviously not not solid. Uh, let's see what we can do. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, OK, well, uh, I guess we just play that out. Hope for the best. Uh, very worried about what the opponent could have here. They might just have some hand destruction, which would be terrible. Albeit, it looks like they're self-mill. Phyrexian is uh, very, very scary. Um, let's go ahead and cultivate here. Um, we're going to get you and you. I'm going to put you down. Uh, so this does give us Xanathar, not this coming turn, but the next. Um, if we'd like it. So we can Fierce Empath. Uh, that does get us the Xanathar, and then the following turn, I believe we can just play it out. Um, Ayara is quite scary. Um, okay, so if we play this, then play lands, then yeah, that does work out. Okay. So we're going to do this, um, then we're going to do this. I would love to take that action. Uh, we do need an untapped land here. That is a Bit of a hiccup in my plan there um just because we drew so or we started with so many triumphs so that might have been a bit of a mistake uh to try and go for the druid class as well but we'll uh we'll see what happens here it'd be great if we can just get xanathar down and then just start stealing stuff from the top of their deck they also uh, xanathar is a very cool creature so not only do you steal stuff but 
um they the opponent can't play stuff during your turn uh which is honestly kind of relevant um i'm i'm gonna block here we're gonna save as much damage as we can interesting they didn't play anything so they know xanathar is coming i assume uh we'll go ahead because we're not gonna do anything else i mean i i don't anticipate to fairies protectioning just because a yara is probably about the best they can do and they just gave up what what a weird game um all right fair enough we're gonna count it uh but that is a weird one that is so strange all right let's go to game three and here we are for game number three, guys, our third and final game. Uh, and yeah, I mean, this is a pretty easy keep. We've got a turn two Druid class with Dryad plus Guardian. Like, that seems pretty good. Um, we'll see if this actually pans out. We do need, ooh, Fierce Empath is quite helpful. Fierce is just so solid because it does allow you to kind of go in and, and fetch whatever you need in terms of creatures, obviously, which we've only got a couple that it hits, but those couple are very good, so. We're gonna go ahead and get druid class down they might have a spell pierce or something that's the only thing i could really think of but this is going to gain us a little bit of life during this game which hopefully uh keeps us a little further into it all right 100 expecting a counter but the positive right now is that we do have multiple dryads and multiple fierce empaths so i'm gonna go for the dryad first this opens up mana possibilities for us uh just in terms of whatever we draw as long as it's three three mana we can play it so i'm gonna go ahead and shoot for that first fierce empath the creatures that we get with fierce empath we can't play anytime soon so there's not a huge benefit to to playing that right this second now next turn if they counter this uh which looks like they are that does raise the question what do we go for um dryad now becomes our only dryad which is a scary place to be but well that solves that problem um all right never mind just kidding ignore everything i just say uh just said Talrond is very scary though uh the flying is is kind of a problem for us i'm assuming they've got bounce and burn um just seems like the kind of deck that's going to um so i think the play is honestly we're gonna attack in because here's the deal we've got teferi's protection we also have flash guardian uh which is kind of solid um so i think we just wait no reason to to rush it at the moment um the opponent's not doing a lot they just basically didn't do anything last turn uh which is kind of interesting i kind of hope they attack with Talran. um i will 100 percent try and flash this out for a uh a kill if they don't ha i mean they could just counter burn this or do something like that that's totally fine um but i'm gonna try and do this Um, because if we can trade for Talrand, like, that is such a big hit to them. Uh, that's a bit annoying, I'm not gonna lie. Um, alright, you got it. And not only does this really do a lot for their board in terms of spitting out a 2-2 flyer, which is relevant, um, but more importantly, it actually prevents us from, from playing another land this turn, uh, which is kind of scary, so... I think we pass and potentially do the same trick again. I just don't want to hit another memory lapse. That's like a big problem for us, actually. Um, I mean, they're not, I assume, not going to attack with Talrand into Dryad. So there's no reason to to Guardian this, like, right this second. Um, and in fact, I think I just wait to make sure. <sighs> no land. Oh, no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have exactly seven. I'm just gonna wait. Um, yeah, I think I just wait. We'll see how this goes. Um, thankfully, we're not under a ton of pressure, which is kind of surprising. They just must have like a buttload of counters. Um, but we really, really need lands here. Um, I mean, I assume this just gets countered but like oh it doesn't wow uh very surprising um i'm gonna get two basics we don't yet have um this does allow us to play both of them so that's pretty relevant and gain two life back um which is honestly about one turn of what they've done so <laughs> i will happily take it um they're gonna lightning strike us 
to try and get this done a little bit faster, which makes sense. Um, wonder if they're just stocking up. Yeah, it looks like they are. So they've just been stocking up all this burn uh, with the anticipation of just being able to to attack in and kill us. Um, that's interesting. So thankfully we do have lands now, uh, which we can do something with. Um, so here's the thing. I'm going to Druid class. Uh, this sets us up potentially well for next turn. Um, I'm going to resolve. I'm then, I think I'm going to go ahead and Teferi's Protection now. I'm curious to see what happens with the Druid class if this actually lands. Um, and it may not, and that's okay. Yeah, they've got another memory lapse. All right. So we're dead, right? We're just super dead. Yeah, they just attack him with everything. Man, what an interesting deck this is. Talran, you would not expect to do super well in this meta, because the turn it comes down, I think a normal deck would be able to kind of either outpace or just kill it. Um, unfortunately, we haven't been able to do that, but regardless, the opponent won. Uh, let's talk about this deck a little bit. All right, so unfortunately, we really didn't get to see this, uh, this Steel Stuff deck steal much of anything. Uh, we did see it win game two, but the opponent conceded quite early. Uh, I think we were about a turn away from really kind of going crazy. We did have the Xanathar in hand, so it would have probably worked out that way. Um, but unfortunately, we just didn't get to see it happen. Uh, all that to say, though, I really like Xanathar as a card. I really like the idea behind this deck. Um, I thought we had some very interesting matchups. I'd be curious to revisit this again in some some different uh, fields and maybe see how it goes. Uh, I do think this deck is lacking slightly uh, in certain areas, but it it tries to make up for the the lack of. I mean, it has a few sweepers, but the lack of being able to truly deal with stuff with things like Teferi's protection which I think works. Uh, it also serves very well as protection for the creatures like Xanathar, uh, which is obviously important, but uh, it does mean that you don't actually deal with what the opponent's doing. Uh, and in a circumstance like this, even if the Teferi's protection would have landed, we still wouldn't have been in much better shape the next turn. So it's like, uh, is it really helping that much? Um, so I just would be curious to kind of play around with it a little bit. I love Xanathar, though. I want to see Xanathar do well. So if you have a deck that like you feel really, really works, please share it. I would love, love, love to see it uh, because I really do want to make sure we can we can get a good test in with this card. But regardless, guys, I really appreciate you all watching. Thank you so much. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I will talk to you guys again very, very soon and uh, hopefully have some more gameplay for you as well. So we'll talk to you.